Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Tucked in the back corner of our barn lies this old gal. She is a 1924 McCormick Deering 1020. For the past five years she hasn't ran, and I haven't had the time to tinker with it, but last winter I decided I would get her running. It took a lot of work. The mice had made a home in the clutch housing, and the clutch was rusted fast. I had to take the clutch out, clean it up, put it back in, clean out all the mice nests. The carburetor, which isn't really a carburetor, it's called a fuel mixing unit on these old girls, was uh, not operating properly. It would flood, so I took it apart, adjusted it, cleaned it up, put it back together, and the magneto, which generates the spark for the spark plugs, didn't work either. It turned out it had a bad coil. I had to send it to a shop out in the Midwest where they rewound the coil on the magneto because you can't just take the coil unit out and put a new one in. You got to take the whole thing apart and actually rewind the coil on the magneto armature. A lot of work. But finally we got her all back together. Now the other problem with this tractor was the fuel tank which leaked badly and I spent a lot of time patching it up to get it at least so that the tractor was runnable. And I thought I had it there, but soon after I had it all back together and running well, the darn thing started leaking again, and I just gave up on it. It's so badly rusted out. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to refurbish an old fuel tank. I found one finally, a new old tank that's in better shape than this one. We'll clean it up, get the rust out of it, and get it ready to put on this tractor. In the next video, We'll put the fuel tank on the tractor, tune her up to get her running again because she's been sitting for a year, hopefully pull her out of the barn, run her around so you can see what an old tractor sounds like and how it drives. Stay tuned. I spent about a year looking for a replacement tank and that is such an old tractor, they just aren't easy to come by. And finally on a Facebook group, I found one for sale in Pennsylvania. The guy was really nice, he, he shipped it up here for me and the tank's in good shape. It's got some rust in it so we need to clean it out. I think I've tried every method there is to clean out old fuel tanks. I've tried the etch and coat method where you put in a prep and then you coat it with a plastic based material like red coat. I always worried about that flaking off and found that it didn't really work very well as far as sealing holes. Luckily this tank doesn't have any holes. Uh, I tried the put some kerosene or diesel fuel in it and some nuts and bolts, tie it to a tractor tire, jack the tractor up, let the tractor run with the tire going to clean it out through abrasive action. That worked okay, but it took forever and it was a lot of screwing around. Then I went for the last two or three tanks to using muriatic acid, which eats rust, and then baking soda to neutralize the acid along with a lot of water and then drying it out with a hair dryer, my wife's hair dryer, which gracefully she lets me borrow for this, and then coating the tank with oil to keep corrosion from starting again. If I do this method correctly, the tank looks like new when I'm done. I'm gonna see if I can shine a light in here and show you all how rusty it is. This is not an easy shot to get, but well, let's see. You can see it's got some pretty good pitting in the bottom of it and certainly a lot of rust. Here's a good measure of how the acid will work. Here's the tank cap. You can see how rusty it is. It is really pitted up. We'll look at it again afterwards and see how clean it got. Just put a plug in the outlet so we can get that acid in there and swish it around without it leaking out. This is definitely a job you want to do with good ventilation. The fumes from this stuff will burn your lungs out and you don't want to get a snoop full of it. I put a good dollop in, let it do its work till it quits outgassing and fizzing. It doesn't really need to be swished around that much because it's the chemical action, not the mechanical action that's doing the work. You just want to make sure it gets coated. <coughs> Don't breathe this stuff in. <laughs> Oh, what is that? That is a pinhole. Nuts. A little pinhole like this can be fixed with JB Weld or a chunk of solder. I'm not sure which I'll do, but I kind of prefer 
using solder for gas tanks. JB Weld melts if it gets too hot. That's the problem I had with the old tank is the JB Weld guy was too close to the engine and it melted it. Now we'll go out and flush the tank with plenty of water to neutralize the acid and put some baking soda in too. Lots of rinses. Water's coming out clear, that's a good sign. Not rusty. Now we'll put the plug in the cap back on, put some baking soda and water in, let it sit in there and neutralize any remaining acid that's left. How much of this stuff do I put in? Well, I don't know. I guess enough. A bunch. All right, sat for a little while. We'll dump the baking soda solution out and then give it a final rinse with water and we'll be good to go. So our tank's all clean now. Here's the cap and you can see the difference. I'll put up the other photo before of the cap so you can look at them side by side. But you can already see, see this brass in here and see how clean these threads are? The acid really takes it off. And if we look inside, you can see how much of that rust just dissolved away. There's still a little in the bottom, but I'm not too worried about that. Now the next step is to fix those pinholes that we found when we were putting acid in the tank. And first to do that, I've got to dry off the outside of the tank so I can see where it's leaking, pour some water in as a test, and then we can mark the pinholes before soldering them up. We'll put some water and then mark them with a Sharpie. Don't need a lot of water. Right there. I don't even need to mark that one because you can see the hole. There's some other pits in here that I'm a little bit worried about around in here and I'm going to put a dab of solder in some of those too just as insurance. I don't know why, but these tanks always seem to pit the worst on the operator side. This is the back end of the tank. And I think, well, actually I know why that is. It's because this is exposed to rainwater if the tractor's sitting outside. The front of the tank's underneath the hood. Silver solder's the way to go with this. I found it sticks a lot better to the steel than normal pipe solder. First a little flux. Now there's no worries about fuel exploding in the tank because I just cleaned it out and the acid removed all the varnish and everything. I've got the fill spout open for any hot air to escape but completely safe. The trick is not to overheat it so that the solder doesn't just fall through the holes but get it so it'll just melt the solder. Let the solder harden in the hole and then build it up a little bit around it so you've got extra strength. But the solder that drops into the hole and forms into it will lock that solder right in place. Well, it ain't exactly pretty, but it'll work, and we'll leak test it to make sure it does. Voila! No leak. This is a tractor that I'm leaving in original condition. I'm not painting it or prettying it up at all. Just getting it mechanically sound so I can run it around. I like the patina that an unrestored tractor has. It tells its history. And this will be a part of its history. It had some pinholes in the fuel tank and I soldered them up and it's fine just as it is. Next step is to dry the tank out with a hair dryer and then swish some motor oil around in there to keep it from flash rusting. I won't be able to dry it out all the way. I'm blowing the air in this big hole and it's coming out the little drain hole. So it doesn't dry very well, but it'll be all right.
Well, this tank should be ready to go. I coated it with oil. I took the bottom drain plug out and I'm letting the excess oil drain out and I'll leave it this way till we install it on the tractor in the next video. You'll see this go on. We'll start the tractor up and drive it around. A hundred year old tractor alive again. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time and have a great day.